Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I... S Jesus Christ, this dog is going to be so loud. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I just have a real quick and simple extension care and frequently asked questions video for you guys. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in getting extensions, specifically sew-in extensions, this is definitely going to be a video you want to tune into, so just keep on watching. with how you care for the extensions so I typically prefer to use a volume shampoo and a moisturizing conditioner so I don't like using a whole lot of moisture especially up where the whiffs are because it does make them a little bit slick and they're more prone to slipping at that point I just put the conditioner right on the ends and like up where my natural hair is you also want to use a color safe shampoo and one that's of course sulfate free, paraben free, stuff like that, just because those are bad for your natural hair. So, you know, you still want to make sure that you're maintaining and caring for your natural hair, even though it's not the star of the show while you have extensions in, you know? Okay, so next is dry oil. I'll throw in a shot of the dry oil right down here. Um, so this is the one that I like to use and you want to use a dry oil over a normal oil simply because of the way that it interacts with the extensions how do you brush extensions so this is a very common what's a good word um a really common belief is that you know like you're gonna pull your hair when you're brushing it because you know you're grabbing the wits so you have to start at the end of the hair and work your way up you're not gonna put the brush directly on your scalp except up here where it's just natural hair but you have to be careful around the whiffs because you will snag them with your brush if you're not and it's just not going to be a good time i simply like using a wet brush i find that that slides glides it glides through the extensions very very well it doesn't grab it and like pull it you know so how to sleep in them so this one is really a key factor to keeping them very well kept and making sure that they have longevity you know you don't want to pay all this money for extensions and then take them out the next time that you're supposed to get them moved up you know like within eight weeks you don't want to have to take them out because you haven't been taking care of them you know we'll get into how long they're actually supposed to last but what you're supposed to do is use a bonnet I call mine my bonbon um specifically a silk bonnet and of course you know just curl your not curl your hair but like wrap your hair a little bit throw the bonnet on and let it go you can also um braid it as far down as possible and secure it with something that's not going to make an indention of course it's going to be a little bit thinner at the bottom sorry my dog is being so weird right now you're going to have to use something that's a little bit smaller do a bonnet do a braid um do a twist something like that but you don't want to just have it down and loose while you're sleeping and the times that I have done that, sometimes it's okay and it doesn't really affect my hair any, especially when I'm like napping. But most of the time, most of the time, when I sleep with it just out and about like this, I'll wake up and the ends will be so dry and rough and they'll just like be folded around, bent the wrong way, etc. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it happens because I also sleep on a silk pillowcase and it still happens like it doesn't make a difference. So the best bet from my experience is just to put it in a bonnet and if you want to you know have some waves the next day and you like do some messy curls something like that throw it in a braid and go to sleep okay okay another thing that you want to stay on top of is move ups and trims so this is also a vital 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 part of making sure that your extensions have the longevity that they're supposed to have so as far as move ups you'll schedule that of course with whoever does your extensions 
and usually the hair people are really good at staying on top of your appointments and your recurring appointments so definitely talk to them and make sure that you know you have it booked out already or you know you have it on your calendar of when it's supposed to be booked when you get your extensions you typically want to start longer than what you want hear me out on this let's say if i wanted it if i wanted my hair to be long i wanted the long hair dreams you know what i'm saying i would probably get like a 24 26 so that just like normal hair when they get all straggly and raggedy down here you trim it and it's still long so i get asked a lot about my extensions typically when people find out that i actually have extensions they're like oh my god and start asking me questions um because first of all you can't really tell that i have extensions so most people cannot tell that i have extensions however that's not the case for a lot of people out there and that is why it's so important not only to do your research on who you're, who is doing your hair um, but ask around talk to a couple different people see what their results look like before you go and get your hair done also make sure you're talking to your hairdresser about you know how do I achieve this natural seamless extension look because that is very important that's something that a lot of people don't talk to them about um, I've seen some really rough extensions and I think if a conversation was had prior to the extensions about what goes into getting that seamless flow, that seamless blend, um, I think they would have had a different experience. So a couple of things to note when you're getting your extensions done, how many wefts are required to get your hair as blended as possible. One weft is not going to look good unless your hair is extremely thin. If you have some thickness in your hair, you're gonna have to have more wefts because of the thickness of your hair. To get that seamless blend, you do need to thin out the ends just to make sure that it just flows through there, you know? So regarding costs, it really depends who you go to and what hair vendor they use. So I typically will spend a big buck on my on the actual hair because I want it to look as natural as possible. You can get synthetic hair and it's way cheaper, but it's also not gonna look near as good as what it could look like. And in my opinion, if you're gonna be getting extensions and you're gonna make that jump, you know, spend some money on it, you know? You want them to look good because there's nothing worse than getting a service done to you and you absolutely hate it and now you're stuck with it for the next like eight weeks, you know? Be careful who you go to, talk to a couple of different people, um, make sure that you know the process and what it's going to take to achieve that look that you want. Of course, stay knowledgeable on the hair that they use. Usually the hairdressers will link, you know, something on their website like, hey, this is the website that we use, this is the vendor that we use, and you can go look at it, you know, that website and make sure the hair is what you're looking for. It's, the look that you're looking for. Regarding costs, hair is the bulk of the cost. Um, and like I said, you know, spend a pretty penny on it if you want it to look good. There's no shame in it. You gotta do what you gotta do because it's gonna be worth it in the end. Specific hair, I don't know if I wanna throw out the cost because I really don't remember if, uh, I don't know exactly. I got these in like June, okay? And it's now almost December. So they still look really good. But I'm pretty sure the hair costed around $700. Um, and of course, the actual service is going to be another cost. And it depends on who you go to, what they're going to charge, you know. I'm pretty sure, um, no, I know the lady that I go to charges $350, I think, or $300. $300 or $350 um, for the actual service. Now, that cost right there is what you're going to be paying every six to eight weeks when you go back for your move up and trim tone whatever color whatever you need to do um, to get it back right you know you're going to do that every six to eight weeks and it's going to be that service cost service charge of like 300 350. you of course won't have to buy the hair except one time so it's vital that when you do buy the hair you take care of them so that they last as long as possible because there's nothing worse than doing what I did. I had some blonde extensions like a year and a half ago, two years ago, and um, it was two years ago. And when I went back for my first move up, I said, hey, I just wanna take them out. And she was like, okay, keep the hair so that you know when you wanna get them put back in, we can just already have the hair, you don't have to buy it again. 
Well, I didn't do that, and it was, you know, a while before I got my extensions again, so I just went ahead and bought more hair. Why did I do that? I don't know. I don't know. Take care of your hair. Keep them in as long as possible. If you don't want them in, take care of the hair. You know, like, put them somewhere safe. The cost of the hair also depends on how many wefts you want. So I have two wefts in, like I said, so I think the wefts were around $300 a piece. Now, with that being said, if you do have thicker hair, you're going to be spending more money on the hair. And if you have thinner hair, you'll be spending less, etc. Unless you just want a bunch of wefts anyways. I wouldn't recommend minimizing the wefts that you're supposed to get because of the cost. Like I said, spend the money on the hair. One time and you're good for next question. Um, how long do, do they last? Nine months to a year. Like I said, I got these done in June and they still look really good. I will say they are getting a little bit like knotted easier, tangled easier now, um, but it's been over six months, you know? Or it's been right at six months. So they're getting to that point where they're like, okay, you know, it might, you might start saving up for the next round of hair. They last a long time. That is why you need to take care of them so you can get that full longevity. How often do I wash my hair with my extensions? So I actually wash it the same, if not less than when I didn't have them in. So that's the good thing about extensions. You can care for them exactly how you care for your normal hair, but you need, if you, if you're the if you're the type of person that washes their hair every day, you're not gonna do that when you have extensions, okay? Um, it's just not good for the extensions and you'll get that sliding effect where they start sliding out. So you're not gonna do that. I wash mine once a week. If even that, maybe every like nine days, nine, 10 days, I'll wash it. Um, and I do like that about having the extensions because when it starts getting oily, rather than, you know, all of the hair just looking rough because it's got oil on all in it. It's usually only up here that looks rough. So you can throw it in a cute, you know, slick back ponytail. You can do a braid. You can increase the time between washes because of the extensions. There's more options for hairstyles and dirty hairstyles, stuff like that. But when it is clean, I typically straighten it. Like right after I wash it, I straighten it. One thing I don't like about the extensions, if you curl them or wave them or just anything like that um while they're clean you're gonna have to keep doing that because you're not gonna get them straight again especially like up here near the wefts and that's also the case when you braid your hair at night like you can't braid your hair at night and then expect it expect to straighten it the next day i just don't have good luck with that and it does not look good um so as soon as i wash it and blow dry it i straighten it and then that'll last me for like two days and then I'll go through the process of like, okay, am I gonna wave it? Am I gonna crimp it? Am I gonna curl it? And then the last like three days between washes, um, I'll start putting it up in a ponytail, putting in a low bun, putting in a braid, stuff like that. So they're, it's very versatile. The extensions are so versatile. You can basically do anything with them and that is what makes them so good. Okay, so that pretty much rounds out um the video i hope if you are interested in getting extensions i hope this video helped you out there are so many different extensions that you can get as far as tape ins um sew in uh beads i don't know what those are called ever i always forget what they're called but there's a bunch of different ones of course do your research watch multiple videos this one is specifically about sew in extensions um so yeah, just make sure you do your research on, you know, the hair, the process, what service you're actually getting, and um, the person doing your hair. Make sure that it's reputable and have good results consistently. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. You can drop, you know, whatever in the uh, comments or message me via my socials. You can follow them here you can find them here i'll link them down below as well um but yeah i hope this was a little bit helpful if possible bye